So just for a quick recap, we realized that if we have two congruent shapes, they have the same area, and that if we have a shape that's composed of two different figures, then the entire area is the area of one of the figures plus the area of the other, as long as the areas are not overlapping. Notice, if my shape looks something like this, I've got to be careful about this overlapping area, and that's where the postulate falls apart. Now let's look at some specific areas. We have the, we're going to look at the area of a square, a rectangle, a triangle, and a parallelogram in this set of videos. For a square, what's nice about a square is however wide we go, we also go exactly that high because a square is equilateral. And so what we find out then is that all the lengths or all the sides are the same measure, so we're going to label them all s, and the number of square units that fit in here is going to be s times s. So the area of a square is s squared, where s is the side length. Now let's look at the area of a rectangle. Rectangle has a different length than height, but we still have right angles, so this is still fairly easy to calculate. The length tells us how many s units we go across. The height tells us how many units we go up. So here, we notice we go six units across, so every row is going to have six square units, and we stack three of those rows on top of each other. So we have 3 times 6 squares, which is length times height. Or you can always say length times width as well. The general area for a rectangle then is length times width. So in this case, our area is 3 times 6, which is 18 units square. If we want to, real quick, we can jump up and see that the area of the square is. 3 times 3, or 3 squared, which is 9 square units. All right, a triangle. We talked about this a little bit last semester, but the easiest way to conceptualize how to find a triangle is to set it inside of a rectangle, and then to look at one half at a time. If we look at this half, we realize that the area of this part of the triangle is one half of this entire rectangle here. Now let's look at this half. Again, the area of our this part of the triangle is one half of this half of the rectangle. Thus, in general, the area of the triangle is one half the area of the rectangle. Since rectangle is b length times width, or length times height, in this case we'll say that the length is the base of the triangle, and h is the height of the triangle. Since the area of the rectangle is base times height, then the area of the triangle is one half base times height. And this is where we come up with that formula that I'm sure many of you have seen before but at least it gives you an idea of why that makes sense. And lastly, we look at the area of a parallelogram. Remember, a parallelogram has opposite sides are parallel, and that means opposite sides are congruent. Well, what we could actually do with this is we could cut off this triangle here and move it over to the other side. So we're going to ignore this triangle, because we can put it now over here. This has turned our shape into a rectangle, where we get base and we get a height. So the area of a parallelogram is base times height. you got to be careful, though. The height is this vertical height that creates a right angle with the base. In general, it's important to note the relationship between base and